been playing Blow on our show, we've been getting such amazing feedback. In fact, we've been getting feedback for every track we've played off the soundtrack so far. How excited are you to be part of such an amazing soundtrack? I mean, what a lineup, right? It's so it's so cool. The feeling is just like, you know, it's unlike anything because to, to be put with bands like Five Finger Death Punch and, and Papa Roach and, you know, uh, I think The Who has, uh, you know, a couple of uh, track on there as well. It's just, you know, it's such a wide variety of sounds, right? But then you get everybody together on this record writing music for this specific soundtrack and it's just massive. It's so fun. Now, I was lucky enough to see the film about 12 months ago at a festival, and I remember coming out of the film and I was like, I need that soundtrack. It wasn't online at the time, so it, I had to wait for it. But it's one of those films, and is that something that you're so excited about now? Have you been able to see the film, and have you had that experience as well? I did. I went to the Santa Fe Film Festival. So you and I are the same. Like We, we, we went to film festivals, and we were like, I need this to come back right now. But it didn't. Uh, we had to wait. In very impatiently waiting, uh, as, as I affectionately refer to it, as because there's so many different changes, you know, with the whole pandemic thing that went on. Um, but I'm finally, I'm so excited that it's here. Um, I've always said, even from, like, the beginning of when we were filming it, that it had very Evil Dead vibes, yeah. um, which was super fun for me. So I, I think a lot of people will really enjoy it. Because we had the Who on our show last week while they were in Australia, and they haven't seen the film yet. So they're... They said they're in this kind of weird space at the moment where they know that their track is in the film and they know that people are loving the track, but they still haven't had a chance to see the film. Isn't that wild? Yeah, I mean, it's such a strange space to be in too for us as musicians. You know, they're very busy. They're, you know, on tour. And, and so I just so happened to be not on tour when the Santa Fe Film Festival was going on. And I had a pretty unique experience with the, the whole filming process at any case. And so I, I immediately, um, I hit up Michael Lombardi and I was like, is there any chance I can swing through this, this next upcoming festival? Please tell me, are there more festivals that are coming up? Because I knew I had missed the one in LA. And he said, oh my gosh, yes, you, you have to, you have to come. The next one's Santa Fe. So I just so happened to be able to make it. And, um, it just, it, it held such a special place in my heart, the whole filming uh, experience that I, I had to go and had to see it. So tell us a little bit about how you felt when they first approached you, because of course you're in the film as well as um, having a track on the soundtrack. So how did they first approach yeah. you, and what was that pitch when they first approached you? It was it was funny. It was one of the first things that I had done uh, being a signed artist on the label. So um, we had uh, they had worked on another film called Snow Babies that featured our music, and so um, Michael had already been uh, kind of you know prepped on, on our music and our sound. So when they wanted the logo for the soundtrack, he uh, he said, you know, would you like to be sort of like an, an extra in in this film? And I said, okay, cool, you know, that'd be uh, amazing. I've always had an interest in it. I, I don't know. I mean, you'll have to see the film just to see if I'm any good <laughs> at acting. Um, but it was it was a fun thing. He said, uh, you know, at first I was going to be one of the, the kind of creatures in the film. And then, you know, like I was saying, it had happened at such a weird time with the pandemic and like certain actors and actresses weren't that were slated to be part of it weren't able to participate in the film. And so the whole opening scene sort of just became like, available option for me to sort of swing into and so michael had so much fun with me on set the first time and uh, i just i fell right into stuff with these guys um it was just sort of a really cool kindred spirit moment and i just met everybody and fell in love immediately with their, their whole vibe and i was very interested in the whole process Is that a question? When do I get on a plane? Let's do this. <laughs> so it just, it sort of happened um, in a real funny way, but it was, it was so fun. Yeah, uh, and you were great in the film too, so don't worry about that. You were really, really good. And Thank that, you. That was one of the things I think that I loved about this movie so much, because apart from a music journalist, I work as a film journalist, and I see a lot of films where they have um, musicians or people who aren't actors come in to do cameo roles, and sometimes they stand out really badly. But in this film, 
everybody just blended in so naturally that it felt like everybody in the film was was really natural. So I guess, is that how you felt on set? Were you nervous on set, or did you feel really calm on set? I think, you know what, I love that your takeaway from that, because I was also kind of afraid that that might occur. You know, there's so many musicians in this film, but they were so strategic in placing, you know, where they, where these, these musicians came in at. Um, I think a lot of it was very believable because of that. Uh, it's, it's got a, like a campy horror vibe, very gore horror vibe anyway, so I feel like a lot of the, you know, tongue-in-cheek and like the funnier parts uh, really fit as well. And the cameo performances, I think, were, were really cool. I felt comfortable because, I, like I said, I, I was just so enamored by the whole process, um, and it was the second time that I had been to set that, um, that we actually got it done. So... It was it was a lot of fun for me. I'm glad that it translated that it was natural because it felt that way to me being a part of it. Were you a big horror fan before this film, or was that something new for you as well, being involved with the horror genre? You're gonna laugh at me so much, but I am the biggest chicken ever. <laughs> I am not a horror film person. I have nightmares still. Sleep with nightlights. Like I, I can't even lie to you. It was really funny to my friends that the first film that I was able to be part of was a, was a horror film. Like they were like, she's going to die on set. You can't, she's not a scare fanatic. <laughs> but I, um, like I said, I, I got through it. I think it was, it was good that it wasn't necessarily a movie that included anything like, you know, uh, demonic or aliens really get to me. So like, it wasn't either of those things. So I felt like I was all right. <laughs> I think that's something that you really notice with this film as well. It is a horror film, but you can perfectly understand the central characters and why they act the way that they do. Was that something that stood out for you when you first read the script? The story was very twisted, and, it, and it, the way that it was twisted was was very, I guess, believable to me. I'm like, wow, you know, I hadn't really considered that, but if this was, in fact, what happened, I could see where this would go down that road, you know? So it was, and that's all I'll say. I don't want to... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For those people who are wanting to go see it, you need to go see it because it's got like a really weird twist, very um, graphic twist to it that I feel like was like, wow, they went there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the track Blow. Did you write this track especially for the um, for the actual uh, film soundtrack or was it just selected for the soundtrack? We had it ready to go, and um, it was in in the mind's eye of the band when we wrote it, it was just supposed to sort of be like a, a fun, you know, uh, high energy sort of, you know, snarky rock song. And so we really didn't um, see the vision, you know, for it being a part of a horror film. At first, I was, that kind of felt like, really? I don't, I don't see that at all. But when they... When they um, we got with the creative team at the label and they kind of like, you know, gave us the, the skinny on how they thought we should do the, the music video. Then everything sort of fell into place. And I was like, oh, this is cool. This is way different than I envisioned, but it was super cool. So what was the track originally written about? Uh, you know, when I, when we wrote it in the studio, it was kind of like something I felt like um, almost... Uh, I guess if I could paint a scene in, in a movie from, from my head, what I experienced as I we were writing it was like, there's a woman who's also sort of like undercover trying to like blow maybe uh, this this case wide open, right? And so they're at this maybe like a, a poker table at a casino type of thing and she's like, you know, just fly on the wall. You know, they think that she's just a pretty girl, but she's really, she's there to, to blow up their whole operation, right? So, and then you kind of get into the chorus, I'm about to blow, you know, so it's it's like, to me, it seemed like it was a very sneaky, sort of snarky, like I'm going to get you kind of song. Yeah. Um, but that was, the, that was the image that I had in my head when we wrote it. <laughs> and how did Spencer become involved with the, with the track as well? Because, of course, that's something I think that's attracted a lot of people to the, um, to the song here in Australia. They have got so many fans over here. Um, we did a, a premiere of a horror film over here a couple of years ago, and they um, came along to host it, and 
we had so many entries. I think we only had 100 tickets to give away and we received thousands of entries of people wanting to come along and meet those guys. So what was it like working with Spencer? Wow, that's crazy. First of all, who is not an Ice Nine Kills fan? That was just so fun for, for us, too, to even have, you know, this. And again, it was during a time when not a lot of people were meeting in person. It was all very, like, through the, like, management channels and, like, Zoom call type deal. Um, so I was really kind of blown away they would even submit this to him because, you know, we're new. I didn't, nobody knew who we were. Um, this is our this is our very first release, so I was like, no way we're gonna land an Ice Nine Kills feature, <laughs> right? But then, come to find out, Spencer was a part of the film. He was acting also in the film, and so we kind of met uh, via the Retaliators. And so when we pitched the track to him, he not only was like, hey, this is a really cool song, but he said, hey, you know, it'd be cool as if we wrote the second verse according to my character in the film. I was like, that's a super dope idea we need to do it and the rest is history so finally um it was probably several months later after the song had been out on spotify i'm not quite to radio yet but since releasing on spotify and it was the first um walk on the rockville that we had played and they happened to be there that year and so i kind of saw him walking through the um like where all the bands were hanging out. And I waved, I wasn't sure if he was going to recognize me. And not only did he recognize me, he came right over, started singing the hook to the song, was like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. You know, we grabbed the picture together. It was so cool. They're, they're such nice guys. Very, very nice guys. What a cool, what a cool, you know, experience, I guess, to have his creativity on that track. That is awesome. And I've got Spotify open in front of me at the moment. You guys have got 5 million listens for that track so far. How important do you Wild. how important do you feel that being part of this soundtrack has been for your career? Because I know when I was growing up, I used to discover a lot of music through um, soundtracks. I used to go to and see a film, and if I liked the music, I would go and buy the soundtrack straight away. And I remember discovering Our Lady Peace through um, uh, the Craft soundtrack and picking up things like the Disturbing Behaviour soundtrack. Is that something that was in the back of your mind, that this soundtrack would actually help a lot of people discover Eva Under Fire? It's totally unexpected, honestly. I yeah. know I know that we they wanted this song for the soundtrack, but at that time I had no idea what other music would be included. And so now that I see there's just this massive compilation of huge rock songs, I'm like... Holy crap, this is like the new Queen of the Dance soundtrack. Yeah. Like, or you like you said, the craft or something. You know what I'm saying? Like there are there are still soundtracks from like the early two thousands that people are still talking about that were just huge for rock music. Um, and this absolutely could be the next one, which is super cool. But yeah, definitely an unexpected pleasant surprise. I have to ask now, because Queen of the Dams, the soundtrack is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Is that a favorite for you as well? Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was like my childhood right there. You know, it was like the the early two thousands is when you know everybody was kind of like the, the the new goth alternative kick and like Underworld came out and like Evanescence uh, was like a big. I don't think that they were part of the Underworld soundtrack. But they did something with like uh, um, Bring Me to Life was on a soundtrack for some other movie I can't remember now. But like all of those like sci fi movies were including all these like massive rock songs. Like this is awesome you know um even like uh wasn't there some kind of like a post hardcore or industrial music that was in like the matrix soundtracks and stuff too yeah there was and there was a great soundtrack um for the spawn film where they actually got a lot of um electronic artists to work with heavy metal and rock artists so you had like yeah. metallica remixed by dj spooky and stuff like that and it was such an amazing soundtrack insane yeah insane much love to new metal and yeah. the early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amanda, we are going to play Blow on our show again right now. We do have to wait a couple more weeks here in Australia for the film to come out, but we're going to play Blow. So what would you like to say to all of your fans out there before they take another listen to this amazing track and before they go to see the film in a couple of weeks' time? Oh my goodness, much love, Australia. Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up for us early. This one is uh, Blow by Yvonne Fire, and I hope to see you guys soon. <laughs> 